Dreams Football Club. You're welcome to the M Plaza Hotel. First of all, I'll call on the man whose vision and dream has brought us this far. He harbored this dream of building this great football club some years ago, and that dream came into being in 2009. When Dreams FC was born on the streets of Medina, later to Quayman, now in Daewoo, giant strides being made, players being given a bright future, and destinies and homes receiving massive boost. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and welcome the executive director of Dreams FC, Ket Edwin Simon Okrapu. Special, special guest of honor. Our proud partners from Paradise Park Mineral Water. My brother, my chief advisor, my biggest critic, the vice president of Dreams Football Club, Mohamed Gigi Alifo. Colleagues on the management committee of Dreams Football Club, my proud manager Abdul Karim Muzito and your team, the ever working media department, marketing department of Dreams Football Club, our supporters, my colleagues from the media, I've always said, our special guest, that so long as the Ghana Institute of Journalism do not withdraw their certificate awarded to me some few years ago, I continue to be a recognized journalist. I am particularly excited that we find ourselves here today. The story of Dreams Football Club is a bit strange. Some few years ago, we were all part of a family called FCM Mamubi or FCM Midland. I do not want to go into detail as to what happened, but somewhere in the late 2008 into 2009, Dreams Football Club became a reality. From 2009 to 2018, I think it's nine years, we have been on the rise, not because we are the most educated, not because we have the best of energy, not because we have the richest men investing in the club, 
but it's been through the mercy of the Almighty God. Today, we find ourselves inviting the media across the length and breadth of Ghana onto one platform, not only to outdoor our fresh relationship with Paradise Park Mineral Water, the special water that has ensured that Dreams FC have conquered not only the Division One League, but also the likes of Indiana Stars, Accra Hearts of Folk, Midima Sporting Club, Tetima Eleven Wonders, Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Let's clap for ourselves. But we are also here to outdoor our new logo. I'm sure that if you have been following this brand, you are very much used to a certain logo. But we also know that one of the key components, key components of our club is our belief that the impossible is possible. The result is that we have incorporated the still belief into our new logo. I'm sure soon you will see the animation. But we are also here to also outdoor the club's new mascot. I'm sure for those of you who will be privileged to be meeting the mascot, you'll be really excited as to what he's going to do. The mascot, as I speak, is on its way from Timbuktu. And I'm sure that by the time we'll be ready to officially announce the identity of the mascot, the special flight that was chartered for Dreams Football Club by the president of Paradise Park Mineral Water would have safely landed. It's a special guest. We are extremely excited because we believe that the brand Dreams Football Club needs a further push. And the push will not only be found in the new partnerships that we intend to roll out beginning today with Paradise Park, but it would also be given a further push by the new mascot that we intend to adore in some few minutes' time. We are eternally grateful to Fulton Medical Center for the provision of all our medic medicinal needs, and Vision Entertainment, who have contributed to us providing an immense football atmosphere at the Theater of Dreams, Nakia Ghana Limited for all the laundry services, Nike Sports for the provision of the team's apparel. You can see that in the last two years, Dreams FC have only been using, using Nike products. We entered into a three-year relationship with Nike of Europe, and we are happy to be continuing in that relationship. B. Raman Hostels, and of course, Blaze Collection for all the good goodies that you continue to shower on our football club. Our special guests, I hope that a few minutes, or perhaps beyond, that you'll be spending with this family will be good not only for the Dreams FC brand, but for the total good of Ghanaian football history. We believe that our little contribution towards the development of football would be recognized and patronized by the media as we continue our journey into providing what the consumers of our local sport truly, truly deserve. Our special guests, our proud partners, my brother, the vice president, my colleagues in the management, we are grateful for you being here, and I hope that you stay with us during this short ceremony. Thank you very much.
to our special guest, uh, my boss, and very good friend, uh, Honorable Kojoba Ajiman. I uh, welcome you to this special occasion, um, to the board, the executive board of Dreams FC, uh, our friends from our colleague clubs, uh, my friends in the media, um, my people, I always call them. I would like to use this opportunity to welcome all of you here um, to witness this August occasion in the life of Dreams FC. We all know Dreams FC is a young football club in Ghana, but I dare say that we are doing things that even the traditional giants fear to even venture into. So we give thanks and glory to the Almighty. I'm basically here to explain to you the structure of, of our football club. The structure is the operational system we've put in place to ensure that uh, the club moves into the right direction. Um, we have a board, an executive board, made up of three people. They are the main shareholders of the football club. Um, Mr. Kurt Edwin Simeon Okreku leads that execu executive board as the executive chairman, uh, ably assisted by the president of the football club, uh, Mr. Mohamed G. Alifu, and the vice president, Mr. Prince Abdul Hamid. This is the apex of our structural organization of the football club. They are the executive board members of the football club. They are the founders, or we'll say the owners of this football club. Beneath them, we've divided it into two sections, the footballing or the sporting section and the administrative section. I'll just quickly take you through that also. And because of the vast experience and capacity of the executive members of the executive board members of the football club, uh, they are not those kind of board members who sit somewhere and await for us to report to them. They are hands-on executive board members. So they are, I would say, their powers over stretches just being sitting at the top. They have supervisory role over certain departments of the football club, and I'll explain in the GFE. The structure we have is a customized structure. It is not one that is known or what a lot of you are known to. So certain designations might be strange to you, but we've customized our structure in our way to ensure that we operate at the optimum. It's our way of doing things. So just beneath the executive board, of course, is management. And they are executive board members because all the members of the board are members of management. Um, the president of the football club, Mohamed Jalifu, due to, for those of you who don't know him, due to his vast experience in identifying talent, is the head of the club scouting department. It's weird to find nowadays that the president of a football club is the head of recruitment. But in our club, we want to deploy the expertise of everyone where he or she is most effective. So the president, Mohamed Jalifo, is the head of the club's scouting department. The vice president, um, it's weird. He doesn't have an MBA or a master's degree in economics or finance. But if there's a PhD of the street sense of finance, is the vice president. You wouldn't see him with the accolades, with the certificate that some of us pay for. But if you sit across a room with him negotiating a deal, you can be well assured that you'll get Dreams FC the best of deals. <laughs> so the, the vice president is the supervising officer over our finances. Of course, we have a qualified accountant, which I'll come on to. But the vice president, with his expertise, the street expertise of finances, is the head of the clubs. Um, he looks after our money. Of course, aside signing the checks, they are also well experienced in talent identification. Again, I must say, these board members are not members who sit in, their, in the comfort of their office. Where there's a scouting event, you find your board member sitting right across you, sharing ideas. That's how unique Dreams FC is, and that's how far this structure has brought, has brought us. Of course, we have the office for the technical manager. A lot of people don't um, understand the concept behind the appointment of a technical manager. It is our own way of expressing ourselves. 
is the technical manager. He's in charge, not only for the coaches to sit in his office and await coaches' reports. He's a qualified psychologist. He's a qualified fiscal educationist. He also is in charge of training and equipping our team managers for all our teams. Aside the first team, we have a youth team. Up until now, we used to have two youth teams. Still believe and in God we trust. And all, for all these teams, we have team managers for them. And, page, and you can have good uh, videos to see the legendary Gao. And uh, if you've been following, I say that Gao um, is a legend, regardless of his age and any other controversy that we may have about um, experience. If you check on our handles before every game, at least minimum 24 hours after, before the game, or 48 hours after um, a game, you are supposed to get the pre-match and the post-match uh, of the coach or a player. If it doesn't happen in a video, you get a transcription or you get the audio as well on our um, audio channel, which is SoundCloud. So you just get on the Dreams Football Club, you get all the updates you need to know. Player ratings. We started that quite uh, recently in 2018. We realized that a lot of people needed to know how the players fared in each game after 90 minutes. So you go on there, we give you, and it's fair. We try to give people a, I mean, a proper idea of how the players fare because there's no reason to pamper the players against your own when the, the real um, display is shown to everybody to see. Uh, you don't need to be biased. So we rate them according to how they fared on the pitch and then everybody gets to see. Gradually, at the end of the season, we use that also in telling our best player and then uh, some of the players who deserve to be rewarded. Last season, it was Emmanuel Lomote, uh, Eric Gao Gatete, yes, he was our second best. Emmanuel Lomote was the best player, adjusted by the players themselves and management as well. And then you had uh, Muntari Kamenhini, and then Maxwell Arthur, the young chap who is uh, featuring brilliantly at the right back and left back position. Right back position, and then Muntari on left back. They were the two um, best, young, best young players in the team for last season. So Fan Zone, also a very new chapter for Dreams Media where we get our supporters who are, some of them are actively represented here to tell us what they saw of the game and then their expectations. Sometimes they come bashing at Karim Zito and Coach Yebebu. I mean, <laughs> I remember a game in Teshin against um, Sporting Miren. I think we lost. We enjoy watching, let's say this for a fact, we all enjoy watching the Arsenals do one-on-ones um, -on -ones with their players, Manchester, Zlatan, you know, we enjoy that. And then at Dream FC, we offer you that opportunity as well. We try to get up close and personal with the players. They tell us their favorite, I mean, off the pitch incidents, their personal life, and then also as players, of course, the most important aspect is their footballing career, where they hope to be, and then what helps them on the pitch. So those are some of the moments that you get to see with this product, chat room series. Our very first episode was with our skipper, former skipper, um, Abdul Bashiru, who is uh, currently with FC Pristina, not, um, not in Ghana currently. He was the best, second best, or the best defender in the Ghana Premier League last, last two seasons. Yes, thank you. And then he was the, I don't know how he didn't make the best player, but we reserved that one for another time. <laughs> Then our last but not least is Match Day Special. <laughs> last season, it was Twitter updates, it was Facebook, Instagram. We must say that we were not top notch, we tried to up the ladder. And we see other representatives of other football clubs here. We must say that if you want to be the best, you copy from the best. When we came, we copied from the So you realize that you see the hand, and this is what we have been doing as a club for the past three years. When you see anybody who, can, who is part of Dreams FC, you just say Dreams and the person that still believe. So you see it, let me say. All right, so that's the hand and the finger, still believe. And then one thing that we also took cognizance of was the fact that we have an identity. 
At Dream 30, we don't upgrade Sensi from now onwards. A lot of thinking, deep thinking, I must say. At some point, we're really speaking to our mascot. And I also count myself as very fortunate to be part of this enviable occasion. I'm so overwhelmed and stunned by what I've witnessed today. I always see them on, on, on the screens in Europe and other parts of the world. If I'm right, to, this is the first time I'm seeing such a thing in Ghana. And I'll say kudos to Joseph. Since the birth of this club, I've been monitoring them from afar. For the um, last two seasons that they were playing in the Premier Premier League, I drove I drove from Accra to Dawood to watch some of their matches. It's not because I love Ketch or I'm a brother to Henry, but it's because of the product that they had. As as a professional marketer, I'm always enthused by the tools that we, we, we have at our disposal. And I always get myself to be associated with professional stores. Um, I acknowledge you that um, you've done a great, a great job. I would say don't rest on your oars. Um, what we've witnessed today is nice, but I think you can do better and more than this. I will admonish that the various club also emulate such professional gesture. Um, I'm a stand and um, a full blown member and a supporter of Asante Kotoko. But I can tell you that I've, I've, I have a soft spot for Dream FC now. Because, because of what I'm experiencing, what I've witnessed though my, my umbilical cord is, is rooted in the Ashanti region. 
I will also use this opportunity to uh, advise the Ghana Football Association, I'm, and I'm very happy that we have members of the Galka board here, that you, you should try and let your members pick up some of this professional input. Uh, we are all building our game, and I don't think it behoves on the government to come and tell you what to do to make your club very appealing and very professional. The product or, or, or the club is what you, you, you have as a chief executive or as a managing director of any football club in Ghana. You've invested so much money in, in the product that you have. And if it should be attractive and appealing, it depends on how you package and present it. A lot of clubs are crying. A lot of them are dying out. Some are being sold out because they can maintain its status quo. It's all because of lack of funding. And if a club can at least get two or three corporate bodies or companies to support them, it tells you that the tag of the club, that is dream, is reality. That if you are a club in Ghana and you also dream big, you can achieve better and greater heights. The GALCA should try as much as possible to bring up roadmaps so that clubs can pick up certain points from them, especially unveiling your players. At least each, if each club has a social media handle, Facebook, now Facebook is, is, is a tool that everybody handles and move around. If you want to get info from clubs and you, you, you go on Google, you are not getting what, what is be the best alternative. It should be Facebook. So GACA should come up with policies, plans, programs that will help er um, er um, erase those bad and um, outmoded ways of ma managing clubs to step into the professional level. At least you start from somewhere. I don't think dreams started as they, they are today. They started from somewhere. So if every club should start from a certain point and have your dream, have your policies, have your... Uh, I must say that I'm overwhelmed. I never knew that we had a club so poised to do its administration in such a modern I have been around for some time now in football management. I've been around with a number of clubs, including Kotoko High School, uh, King Pfizer. When I was in King Pfizer, I thought I've done a lot, but I'm seeing too much today. I just want to be very brief. I only uh, take the advice of Honorable Ajman, Ba Ajman. I think that, especially in the Premier League, we need to do a lot more. We have a lot to do. But I'm, I'm just wondering why Kept, kept all this knowledge, all these ideas to himself. <laughs> We've been on the same board for a couple of uh, months. All these ideas are hidden in your pocket. But we need almost all the clubs in Ghana to start behaving the way you are doing. <laughs> I won't speak much. You have to go to the drawing board and start acting. Thank you. And mesmerizing. Still believe. Suga. So this is the Club 38 trophy that we won on the 21st.
of January 2018 at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. So those are the trophies. So I'll be at Paradise and sign their part. So essentially what they will be doing is to provide us with water for the season and uh, an undisclosed amount of money. They want to keep it. It's confidential. I mean, it's a company policy. But Dreams FC, I will be happy to announce the, the cash components. It will be news for me as a, as a, as a president. You know. All right, so now the turn of Dreams FC. First of all, Executive Director Keto Krakow. And then later, President Gigi Mohammed will also sign. And then after that, we'll do the exchange of documents, and that will be done for Paradise Park. Are we done? All right, so we'll do the exchange of documents from, yes, to put it in the envelope, and then we'll do the exchange. All right. Let's put our hands together. So, from today, the partnership agreement between Dreams FC and Paradise Park has been rekindled, and it has been renewed for one more season. And much higher. So we are renewing the agreement between and much higher. So we are renewing the agreement between. Let's put our hands together for our mascots. What's up?
right, so the signing is done, we will exchange the documents. Still believe. So, Envision Entertainment and Dreams FC have renewed the ties. Thank you. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's a day that we never thought it would happen because we've come quite a long way. But we, be, we believe that uh, we should be grateful to God for such a unique opportunity. What influenced the decision to change the logo? Well, I think that um, the business of football is an evolving one. And an evolving one that ensures that new ideas must always be embraced. And, and once we continue to develop, once we continue to critique what we do, we thought that it was, it was important that we give true meaning to our symbols, our beliefs, etc., etc. So we had to change, do some changes. We saw so many sponsors on board, but unfortunately, nothing was talked about mybet.com. Um, I think it's part of our surprise package. I, I, I better not speak about it now, but I'm sure in the next few days, you, you, we will speak to this. There was also uh, a surprise package from Mark, uh, Paradise Park, I sound to be corrected. There's a financial package in it. Yes, there is, there is a huge financial package in it, uh, a package that both parties agreed to and we're extremely happy about. We, we agreed that it should be kept silent. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sure that that's not what the media wants, but that's what the partners want. Uh, but we're extremely happy. It's a journey that began uh, a year ago. I think that both parties have been extremely happy, and uh, we, we thank God that today we have another renewal. The season is here, the gala is here. What should we expect from Dreams FC? We should expect um, a very, very competitive team. We will do our best to make our, our, our colors very proud. Thank you very much. Uh, I read a very exciting voice from you when you took over to address us on what Dreams FC just did. What was going through your mind watching a club as young as Dreams FC, nine years old, coming up with things you termed as modern football? You, you know, I was amazed. I've been, you know, overwhelmed by what I've seen here today. And my mind was taken back to the days of Kotoko, when Herbert Mensa started to change things in Kotoko. And I'm comparing this to the time uh, how many years ago? I can't even remember. If we had continued what we're doing with Kotoko at that time, uh, we would have had a lot more clubs to follow our, 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 our ways. And by, by now, a lot of things would have changed in Ghana football. But it didn't happen that way. But I suppose Dreams FC have taken it up and they are doing what we had wanted to do years ago. And I would entreat all other clubs to emulate the example. It's very, very uh, simple matter. You need the knowledge. Get people who are knowledgeable in this area and the clubs would, would definitely benefit from, from the change. You, you talked about how brilliant the idea is and how Premier League clubs have got a lot to do. What should they do to improve? All this, all, all that we have uh, showcased here today boils down to media, a media exposure to the clubs, to the, to the team Dreams FC. It's media exposure, selling the team to the world. And of course, if you look at the, the, the basic uh, philosophy of Dreams FC, they, they are in to groom young players for the uh, international market. Basically, and they will need a lot of exposure through the media to get the world to know what they are doing here. And they are doing just that, what is required of them. What advice will you give to clubs? I, I, I would advise 
almost every club in Ghana to follow the... the Believer gave you this. <laughs> Believer, you gave my cameraman this and you didn't give me. Kochi, GH champion, pressure on you ahead of the season? No, 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 there's no pressure on me because... Before I went to the G8, I had a discussion with my management. For that matter, uh, my technical, uh, my director, he asked me of my objective. Then I told him, I'm just going there to show Dream's brand of football. By in doing so, you accumulate points. If by doing so, I'm able to go to the top, or I have the opportunity to take the cup, seriously, I'll fight for it. And that is what I did. Uh, but. The intention was not to go and then win the cup initially. But as I said, in case we are developing, going, going, and then the chance comes, we we'll grab it. So when the chance came, we, 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 we grab it. After Hazard Fox scored, I saw you scream from your touchline. And you made it clear that you had the chance of winning the game. So what is the motivation for you and the club? Well, I think I saw Hasefo playing Midema uh, during the top uh, G8, G8. So before the match against Midema, seriously, Mufta, I told my boys, if you want to win this cup, we are playing the final against Midema today. If you are able to beat Midema with Hasefo, I win. So that was the what I told my boys, and then you saw that they fought seriously against Midema. With Azifuk, it was even lesser, the pressure wasn't too high. We were on them, even though they scored the first goal, we didn't shake. We know we can beat them, because we have the energy, the strength, and the ability to do that. So what will be the target for Dreams FC in the Ghana Premier League? Well, to maintain ourselves in the league, not to give ourselves any pressure. We want to maintain ourselves in the league. But at the end of the day, we'll be a part of the 50 with me. Are these words to take away pressure from you? No, no. But, you know, I'm dealing with a young boys. Some have never tasted Premier Division before. Um, so you can't pressurize them with a lot of uh, uh, objectives. So as a youth developer myself, I know how to talk to them. I know how to lead them. So I'm holding the remote. So I don't want them to go too fast. So we are going, we are trekking cautiously. Thank you very much, coach. Hey. Leonard, we saw you at the GH tournament. Impressive. Best player, your team won the tournament. Is this an indication that Dreams FC is in the Ghana Premier League to be a threat to any opposition? Okay, that's, that's, that's how... Um now, it seems to be that Dreams FC is going to be a threat to everybody because everybody who loves football knows that um, Dreams FC is playing one of the best football in the country. So now, I mean, uh, there's going to be a little bit of pressure on us, but everything is going to be all right with hard work and then determination. We are going to pull off um, the strings like how we did in the G8. You just mentioned pressure. Pressure is something most clubs that do well are always under. Is this pressure not likely to get on your skin? Oh, okay. The, um, the pressure that I'm talking about is now everybody is looking up to us to perform well in the coming season because we are the G8 champion. So everything, including uh, we playing in the um, G8, um, everything, including we playing the Ghana Premier League. So it's it's going to be one of the very best, and then it's going to be. Um, a seesaw for us because some of the players are also new players playing in the Premier League. So at least it's very good and then the atmosphere and everything, it's going to be very good. But uh, with hard work, determination like how we used to do, we are going to be there. I wish you all the best. Where's, where's Kuchi? An incredible story being told by one of the youngest clubs in Ghana football. What Ghanaians have never witnessed is to have a mascot for a specific Premier League club. Dreams FC have just started that. They've become the trailblazers of Ghana football. They've become the trailblazers of Ghana Premier League football. And sang heroes, young stars, doing what people hitherto never anticipated will ever happen in Ghana football. From the M Plaza Hotel for Quest Free Sports, I am Muftar Nabila Abdullah.